Hello again, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the Color Gemstone Academy. This is your instructor. My name is Paul DC, and this is my YouTube channel. It is called Paul DC Gemstones. And once again, uh, if you're watching for the very first time, or if you just haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out. Don't worry, subscribe doesn't mean that you pay for anything. It's completely free. But it does help me produce more of these videos for you. Today's lesson is another one by uh, request and Prairie Rose requested this one uh, and it is called chrome diopside one of my absolute favorite gemstones and it's <laughs> sometimes when you look this one up it'll say the beautiful gemstone with the ugly name chrome diopside isn't the sexiest of names but it is really one of the most beautiful stones now first of all this was a gemstone that was relatively recently discovered it was discovered in Siberia and Russia in 1988. So I'm going to stray a little bit from the lesson right now to kind of give you a little personal story. Um, 1988, this gemstone was discovered in 1989 was when I became a host in the shopping channel business. Uh, one of my absolute favorite things in all the years that I've been a gem expert on TV is those new finds, finding a, a kind of a new and exciting stone. Uh, I've done that a lot since, but, but this is one of those that I'll, I'll kind of never forget. And even when I took that first class that I told you about at the University of South Florida, I remember that our instructor who was talking about some gems that a lot of people never heard of, she kind of tipped her cap to the shopping channel business saying that a lot of you wouldn't know things like morganite or kunzite if it wasn't for the shopping channel business. And that's act actually very, very correct. So uh, even when I was in Tanzania, I remember meeting somebody out there who was a viewer when I, back in the time when I was working at QVC. And uh, we actually met her on, in a uh, wildlife refuge, like a safari. And um, I said, were you, you know, she, she rec recognized me from TV. I said, well, were you, uh, you know, here to buy some Tanzanite? And she said, well, yeah, I'm going to buy my very first piece. But other than that, I've only ever had rubies, emeralds, sapphires, and diamonds, you know, kind of the big four. So I really like when we can get a brand new find for you, like we did way back then with the chrome diopside. So first of all, what you need to know about the mining in um, Siberia I've, I've often told you that mining happens in some of the most remote and hard to get to locations on Earth, and this is actually to the extreme. If you look at Siberia, which is a very big area inside of Russia, uh, and as you go kind of further north, which is where the mines are, is in a subarctic tundra type condition. Uh, very, very limited mining season for this. Either it's too cold or then it's kind of near the coast, so it gets an excessive amount of rain when it's not freezing snow. Uh, so there's a very, very limited window where they can mine this beautiful gemstone. But you know what I always like to do? I like to give you all of the vital statistics because obviously you may be thinking, well, is this a gemstone that I can wear every single day? Is there any special care and cleaning? Well, first of all, let's talk about the hardness. Now, the hardness on this one is only between a five and a six on the Mohs scale of hardness. Now, remember, hardness is the ability to withstand scratching. And specifically, I always say this, it's the ability of one gem to scratch another gem. So if this is a between a five and a six in the Mohs scale of hardness, is it really, really fragile? No, not necessarily. But remember, if you're just throwing your, your jewelry into a a box where the stones can hit each other, that means that your quartz, which is a seven on the most scale, could scratch your chrome diopside, which is only between a five and a six. The toughness, which is again the ability to withstand cracking and chipping, is not bad, it's good. And that's again, that would be similar to what you would find in your, uh, your quartz gemstones. Refractive index between 1.67 and 1.70, again, what you compare that to, kind of similar probably to quartz, but it would be far cry from the, you know, the 2.4 uh, refractive index that you get in a diamond. Um, specific gravity, remember that's the heft of the gemstone, is about 3.29. And comparing that to some of the heavier stones, like a sapphire, which is a 4, 
but it's then really not bad. It's kind of has more heft than a lot of other stones as well. The composition, uh, the chemical composition is called calcium magnesium silicate. Um, and what causes the color in the chrome diopside? Actually, there's two things. There's iron and there's chrome. Now, when you look at a great specimen of chrome diopside, and I've gone on the record as saying this, this is what every emerald wishes it could be. Why do I say that? Well, because emeralds have a beautiful green color. If you watched last week's lesson, I was talking about barrel stones, the barrel family of stones and emerald is within that. An emerald is a green barrel colored by chrome. If it's a green barrel colored by uh, iron and, and there's no uh, chrome in it, they just call that green barrel. Well, the same is really true with the chrome diopside. If you have that chrome, you have that incredibly beautiful emerald-like gemstone. In fact, it's what every emerald wishes it could be because the clarity is generally much better than what you get in an emerald. So, um, what's the downside of the chrome diopside? Well, the downside is, generally speaking, you can't get very big crystals in that chrome diopside. In fact, most of the ones that I've shown you over the past, if I have one that was a carrot, or even a carat and a half, that's really, really unusual. Why is that? Because that same element chrome that gives it the beautiful color tends to inhibit the growth of that crystal. So they don't grow very big. Now, when you get a chrome diopside that is actually really, really big, and I'll show you some examples of that, the color goes very, very dark. So if you try and find a two carat, three carat, four carat, that means there wasn't enough chrome to inhibit the growth of that crystal. So it ended up with something that was more iron based and some of them can be so dark they're nearly black. But if you can find those stones in that kind of sweet spot from a tenth of a carat up to maybe a carat, maybe a carat and a half, you can have one of the most beautiful green gemstones you could possibly, uh, possibly get. And I think still for the money, it's one of the best kept secrets in the gem industry. Now, what about birthstones? Well, it is not a birthstone per se, because chromium diopside is, uh, by the way, I didn't say where the name comes from. Diopside um, means two faces because of the way that the crystals come to point and sometimes the two intersecting faces. Um, but it's not a birthstone per se, but to me, if you wanted to wear this as a substitute for your emerald at a fraction of the cost, it's perfectly acceptable to wear this as your May birthstone. Now, as far as the stones of the Zodiac is concerned, this would be for Pisces, which I think is February 19th. And I was born on the 15th, so I'm an Aquarius. So February 19th till March the 20th, this would be the stone of your uh, Zodiac. Uh, what else can I say? Um, about the chrome diopside. Well, it's funny, there's, there's some other names that they use for this particular gemstone. Um, I'm not a big fan of using different names, but it's, I think that you should be at the very least aware of them. And that is, um, sometimes it's referred to as a Siberian Emerald. Remember, because it is mined, uh, I, I won't say exclusively, but most of the gem quality chrome diopside comes out of Siberia and Russia. Um, so, uh, sometimes it's referred to as the Siberian Emerald. And again, it is, it's okay to call it an imitation emerald, even though it is a, a natural gemstone. And I forgot to talk about too, that too, which is very important. There, uh, there is no, um, artificial treatments that are done to the chrome diopside. Basically they take it out of the ground, they facet it. There are no treatments whatsoever, no dyeing, no heat treating, no radiation, nothing is done to that natural stone. And uh, I talked about, oh yeah, the special care and cleaning. Um, one of the things about, and I say this with every gemstone, the first thing you should ever do, because you, if you treat your gems with care and respect, they will last you the rest of your lifetime. 
So my recommendation is you get a, a jewelry box where you can separate your gemstones because again, five to six on the most scale of hardness, that means your sapphires can scratch it, that means your topaz can scratch it, that means your diamonds can scratch it. So you wanna make sure you take good care with those. That being said, is a, a something with a five on the most scale of hardness something you can wear every day? Sure you can. Let me put this into perspective as well. Think of a pearl. Pearl is like a two to three on the most scale of hardness and people wear them all the time. Just treat them with the proper respect and you will enjoy them for the rest of your life. Well, I think that's gonna do it for me unless I've forgotten something and I'll add it later. <laughs> that's gonna do it for me for this particular lesson on the chrome diopside from Russia. And if you haven't done so yet, please hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a thing, but it does help me a lot when I get more subscribers. Um, next week, again, from a customer request, we're gonna talk about another color change stone, not the Alexandrite, but this time we're gonna talk about the Zoltanite. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching.